Hello, I am Rev. Benny Yarbo, pastor of the St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church in Joliet, Illinois, located at 1404 South Briggs Street. Our vision here is to edify, educate, and empower the people of God with the Word of God. We welcome you, our online visitors. We thank you for tuning in to our broadcast. We are praying for members and visitors in the congregation that might be in bereavement or in need of prayer. Please contact the church as we move closer to in-person worship service. God bless you and enjoy as we go into another worship experience. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning and greetings in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Read this in your hearing, amen, out of Psalms 27, verses 1 through 4, and it reads, a Psalm of David. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart should not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Shall we look to the Lord in prayer? Father in heaven, God, we thank you and we glorify you this morning, Father. Father God, we realize this wasn't because of our own strength, oh God, that we stand before you today. Father, as we look to the hills from which cometh our help, and we know that our help cometh from you, Lord God, we just ask you in the name of Jesus that you would just send your help today, Lord God. That you would just inhabit, oh God, the praises of your people that we would be a holy habitation unto you. Father God, as we continue, oh God, to seek you while you may be found and call upon you while you are near. Father God, we just pray that you would just tabernacle with us today. Father God, you know every need, every concern, every request. We just pray that you would just allow us to experience your presence. Father God, we thank you for what you are about to do. We glorify you for what you've already done. And we just give your name the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.
Good morning, family, friends, and visitors. We welcome you to our virtual online service. Do you have a prayer request or would you like your name on our prayer list? Well, you can call the church at 815-723-5396. Again, that's 815-723-5396. And leave your name on our voicemail. Join us each Sunday morning at 9 a.m in our virtual Sunday school. You can find the link in our church newsletter or call the church for more information. You don't want to miss this great fellowship. Three ways to give, in person, during our office hours, or by mail. And you can send it to P.O. Box 3223 Joliet, Illinois 60434 or online visit our website at www.stpaulmbchurch.org and go to the gift tab we appreciate each and every one of your contributions take a moment to like love and share our broadcast to each of you who watch us every week, thank you for tuning in to St. Paul, where we continue to edify, educate, and empower the people of God with the Word of God. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless your name. <laughs> it's prayer time. Yeah, yeah. It's a time to celebrate the goodness of God and the faithfulness of God where we can just join our hearts and minds in one accord and stand in agreement with the promises of God concerning us. Hallelujah. Yeah, the word says, and, and we know it said, men ought to always pray. Yeah, my, 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 my. And it's just such a privilege. What a, what a, what a privilege to be able to offer petitions to the true and living God. In, 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 in my meditation this morning, uh, uh, there was something that said, difficulty must be measured by the capacity of the agent doing the work. You know, sometimes we, we, we find things, there's a place where it talks about what's impossible with men is not impossible with God. In fact, Luke, the first chapter and the 37th verse is, is where that kind of comes from. It said, for nothing mm, is impossible with God. So, so, so we're just gathered here to, to petition our, our, our Heavenly Father for every circumstance and situation that, that we may be experiencing that may be bigger than us in, in, in any way. But we know that we serve a God who can do anything but fail. Hallelujah. We have the opportunity to, uh, to just identify some people who have... Uh, Sisters and brothers who've just asked that they be included on our, on our prayer list today. And it has a brother Jeremy Abbott, James Anthony Barnett, James Barnett Sr., Brother Aaron Booker, Paul Carruthers, Deacon Cleotha Caesar, John Dixon, Frank Kelly, Quentin McDaniels, Robert Mitchell, C.Z. Moffitt, Sam Stokes, Larry Thompson and family, Melvin Walker, Ken Walker, and Brother Elmer Wright. Sister Emma Amos is on our list. Sister Suzette Blackman, Sister Azalee Cartwright, Vivian Clayton and family, Queen Dickerson, 
Roberta Fristo, Mother Joyce Fuller, Sherry Gillespie, Felicia Hager and family, Hattie Lewis, Estella Maxwell, Ora Mitchell, Ora Robinson, Mary Smith, Javonna Stepney and son, Vera Suber, Navertia Somlian, Clementine Titus, Betty Williams, Linda Williams, Clara Yarbo, Billie Jean Simmons, Clara Jenkins, and certainly we want to include the entire body of St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church. Please remember our, our families that are in bereavement as well. We have the Wright Amos families, the Kimball Robinson families, the Gray family, the um, Helm family, the family of Sister Cora Hines, and the Caradine and Carruthers families. Just keep them in mind as, as, as you pray. Father, we just come to you right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we just come acknowledging you as God Almighty. God, there's none bigger, there's none greater, Lord. You're the author, you're the finisher of our faith, Lord. So we just come before you with our hearts and mind in one accord, Lord, asking you to hear our humble cries, Lord. We just thank you for being God all by yourself. You're, 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 an, you're an amazing God. Hallelujah. You're a loving God. You're the all in all God. Hallelujah. And we just come before you right now. Uh, just say thank you for being our God. And, Lord, we bring these names before you, all that we've mentioned, Lord, and even those who are not on our list, Father, you know who needs to uh, have your touch, Lord. Lord, so we just bring all of that to you because your word says we're supposed to cast all of our cares on you because you care. Ah. Oh, Father, we just thank you for being a caring God. It doesn't matter what the situation is, Lord, whether someone is in the hospital, Lord, whether they're in the jailhouse, Lord, whether they're on foreign so soils, Lord, uh, protecting, uh, protecting the world as it may be, Lord. I just thank you, Lord, that you are there in your omnipresence, Lord. We just thank you for being that, Lord. I just thank you for your hedge of protection that is around us, Lord, in every situation, Lord. I just thank you for being the healer in the hospital, Lord. I just thank you for being the caregiver in the nursing home, Lord. I just thank you, Lord, for just being all that you need to be, even in the prison, behind prison walls, Lord. Lord, I just thank you, Lord, for knowing that sometimes uh, we don't even realize that we're in the prison in our own minds, Lord. Ah, Lord, thank you for helping us to understand that no matter what our circumstance is, Lord, it's a place that you can be, Lord. And, and your good pleasure is to cover us and bless us and, and, and give us a joy that is unspeakable and full of glory, Lord. Oh, we bless your name, Lord. Lord, I just thank you for the peace that surpasses all understanding for our families that are in bereavement, Lord. Ha! Ah, give them the comfort of knowing, Lord, that nothing is too hard for you, Lord. Give them the, uh, the desire, Lord, and, and the understanding of knowing that they can cast all of their cares on you, God. Thank you for caring, God. Father, we just, we just certainly want to mention what's going on in all those aspects of our world, the economy, Lord, the politics, Lord, whatever's happening in, the, in, in our society, Lord, some of the, some of the norms that, that should not be, Lord. Uh, one of my teachers said, there's a lot of isms that ought to be wasms, Lord. I just thank you, Lord, that if, if we can be the people who will call on you, Lord, we'll learn that you are a very present help in the time of need, Lord. Father, even this day, Lord, I just ask that you would certainly be with this body of believers, Lord, who are gathered here at St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church, far and near, Lord, from, from the east coast to the west coast, Lord, from the north to the south, all over this continent as it may be, Lord. There are those who are gathered here with us, Lord. And I just thank you, Lord, that, that you'll grace us with your presence, Lord. Let your anointing be on all that we do this day, Lord. Every song, Lord, everything that be a proclamation, Lord, that says you are God and God alone, Lord. 
Lord, let your anointing be on the man of God as he come forth, Lord, and impart into us, Lord, the things that you've deposited into him, Lord. Give him the tongue of the teacher, Lord, and give us the ears of the student, Lord, that we may be equipped, Lord, to be those who are called to make your kingdom come. Let it be, God. Oh, we bless your name and we thank you for doing all that you said you would do, Lord. We give you glory and honor in the name of Jesus. Amen. need him more now than we've ever needed him before but I'm so glad that we have somebody we can call on in the time of need and now is the time to call on his holy name there's something about that name Jesus the solid rock I stand all others are sinking sand. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I certainly need him. Amen. Amen. First, give an honor to God, to these fine ministers, to all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. It is truly a pleasure to be here today in the land of the living to tell a dying world once again that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Thank you, Lord. To those of you who are watching us today and sharing this services with us we want you to know that we appreciate you god bless you and may god keep you turn with me if you would to the book of saint matthew chapter 4 the gospel according to saint matthew chapter 4 and we're going to read the first four verses amen saint matthew Chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. And then you're going to find these words recorded. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered mm -hmm. and when the tempter came to him he said if thou be the son of God command that these stones be made bread but he answered and said it is written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. And I want to talk to you for a few minutes from the subject 
a time of testing. A time of testing. And you know, all of us at one time or another has been put to the test. Then, as we know, there are all kinds of testers, and then there are all kinds of tests. And you know, as I thought about it, it excites me to see little children when they began to walk for the first time. They are not sure whether or not they can walk or they will fall. Sometimes they can walk, making baby steps. And then there are times when they fail. It hurts the parents to see their children fall. As parents, we try to assure them that whether or not they walk or fall, that as parents, we will be there for them. But in order to walk or fall, they must uh, take the walking test. Amen. And do you know it is the same way with Christians? Because, amen, you see, at first, we start to scoop. You know how it is with a little baby. The first thing they do is they scoot. Then they go from scooting to crawling. And then they go from crawling to walking. Isn't it the same with the Christian life? Amen. When we didn't know who Jesus was, we were just scooting along on our parents' prayers. Then we began to crawl. We began to realize that there is a God who will do anything for us. But then when we learn how to walk, amen, we realize who God is. Amen. Well, if they fall, we try to show them that we are there for them in their time of need. And if they continue to make steps, there is that special joy of them passing the test. Yes. There is joy yes. for both the child and the parent. Uh -huh. But in order for them to walk, they had to, there had to be a time of testing. Yes, and let me, let, me, let me refer back just a little bit because you remember when your children was real young, yes, and when they took that first step, remember how happy you were when they took that first step. Yes, you remember your emotions because you went, yeah. because you were so happy. Yes, well, that's the way it is with us because we are all children of God. And when we pass the test, can't you see heaven rejoicing? Amen. Because we've passed the test. It gives God's joy to see us pass the test. Amen. Sometimes it is the test that reveals to us the changes we must make in our lives. But in order for us to be effective in life, it is, it is we must be put to the test. And we can all testify. Sometimes we fail the test. Amen. Because all of us, fall down, but I'm so glad, but God will pick us up and turn our lives around. Many of us here today, 
would tell you that I did not pass the test. But God turned my situation around. We have all messed up. Amen. But glory be to God. Amen. For giving us another chance. Amen. And I'm so glad that he is the God of another chance. Yes, Amen. Then God points us uh -huh. in the right direction. And we should be grateful for the test. Yes. Amen. Sometimes our trials come to make us strong. Amen. We've had plenty of trials and Plenty of, of tribulations, yeah. but thank God we passed the test. Amen. And you know, if you turn back to Matthew chapter 3, uh -huh. Matthew told us about John the Baptist who was baptizing down by the Jordan River. And he said that the strangest thing happened because Jesus came to John the Baptist and he wanted John the Baptist to baptize him. Jesus, our Lord and Savior, came to John in the wilderness to be baptized by John. And when I first read this, I can imagine how John felt. Behold, the Lamb of God has come, and he want me to baptize him. Jesus said, uh, uh, Jesus said to John, let it be this way for now. We should all do things that are right. So John agreed to baptize Jesus. And you know why? Because this was the will of God. You see, whenever we do things, we must do it in the will of God. Yes, sir. Amen. And after John the Baptist had baptized Jesus, we saw three things taking place. The first was we saw the agreement. We saw the anointing. And then we saw the approval. You see, because John was obedient to the master and he baptized the master. That was the agreement. The second thing we see is the anointing of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit descended in the bodily shape of a dove and landed on Jesus. Amen. The third thing we see is the approval by the Father. Because a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Amen. Just think about when we do things to please God. God is overjoyed that we have followed his instructions. And if you notice, all members of the Trinity took part. Number one, Jesus, the Son, was baptized. Number two, the Holy Spirit descended in the bodily shape of a dove. And number three, the Father spoke 
from heaven because he said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And this happened at the baptism of Jesus. Amen. Well, in our text, Matthew chapter 4. Matthew tells us that after the spirit had landed on Jesus, Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan. Jesus had not eaten a drink for 40 days and 40 nights. Jesus is telling us that some things come by fasting and praying. Yes, sir. And this was the time of testing. Yes. Three things we see in the text. The first thing we're going to see is how to prepare for the test. Mm. The second thing we're going to see is how to prevail in the test. And the third thing we're going to see is how to proceed from the test. Wow. Ain't God all right? Wow. Yeah. Well, first let us look at how to prepare for the test. You see, to prepare is to make ready. So when the test comes, you are ready for the test. Amen. Jesus had been in the wilderness for about 40 days. First, let us look at the place of testing, which was this wilderness. And many of the Jews saw the wilderness as a place of great danger. The Jews said that this wilderness represented everything that was evil. And it was separated from God. In other words, the Jews said that this wilderness is a godless place. Amen. Now, Jesus is led into the wilderness to battle Satan on his own territory. Amen. And this time of testing is going to last for 40 days and 40 nights. And I'm so glad that Jesus is not afraid of anything. He's not afraid of storms. He's not afraid of sickness. And I'm so glad there's nobody that Jesus is afraid of. And you know what? The number 40 is used in the Bible for testing. Number one, you remember Israel spent 40 years in the wilderness testing. Amen. Number two, Moses spent 40 years in training on the mountainside testing. Well, you remember when Moses saw the burning bush? He was being tested. And he decided he wanted to get just a little bit closer to find out what was going on. But you remember God spoke to Moses and told him that the ground that you are standing on is holy ground. In other words, he had to take off his shoes and to respect the place of testing. Amen. Don't you know when Satan comes from you, when he come for you, 
Satan has to, re to respect the place of testing. Amen. Well, the spies spent 40 days spying out the land of Canaan. And you remember there were 12 spies. 10 came back with a bad report. But there were only two that said that we can do it. A place of testing. But we do know that they did get the victory. Amen. Well, it had rained. For 40 days and 40 nights during the flood. And you know, Noah and his family boarded that up. A time of testing. Because you see, God kept his word. Because when the rain came, the ark began to float. A time of testing. But God has always been in the midst of his testing. Yes. Now God's son has been in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights without food yes. because of testing. Yes. Satan realized that this was a good time to test the master, Satan, said to Jesus, if thou be the son of God, yeah. command that these stones yeah. be made bread. Yeah. Amen. And you know, the first test Satan gives is with food. You remember, Satan is good at food tempted because he tempted Adam and Eve and they did eat from the tree of life. Satan tempted Jacob because you know Jacob betrayed his brother for a pot of stew. Jacob uh, defied Esau for a bowl of stew. Yeah. Amen. So we see that the first test that Satan tried was with food. Uh -huh. Jesus said to Satan, man shall not live by bread alone, mm. but by every word that proceed from the mouth of God. And you know what Jesus was telling Satan? That what you just asked me to do is not in the will of God. Well, Amen. The first sin in the world was through the mouth. Because Adam sinned in the garden. But Jesus said, Man shall not live by bread alone, yes, but by every word of God. Yes. You see, Jesus was prepared to use the word of God to overcome the test of Satan. Yes. Amen. 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 Number two, yes. how to prevail yes. in the test. To prevail means to prove more powerful. And we see that the power of God is more powerful than the words of Satan. Adam fell the test with bread, but Jesus prevailed. Now, Satan is about to use another test. Amen. The first time he tested was with food. Mm -hmm. The second test he's going to use is faith. 
food, fame. Uh -huh. Now, Satan is about to test the second time with fame because he carried Jesus up to a very high place in the temple. And he said to Jesus to jump off. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> you see, my, my, my. they tell me that the top of this temple was about 450 feet high. Uh, yeah. And Satan tells Jesus, if you just only jump off, Jesus has promised that his angels will catch you. Uh, then Satan said, to, he said, it is written in the scripture. He will put his angels in charge over thee uh -huh. and catch you with their hands. Yeah. And you will not hit your foot on a stone. You see, Satan has a way of rearranging the scriptures to fit his program. Wow. But what I like about it, Jesus answered Satan, amen. It also says, it also says. in the scripture, yeah. do not test the Lord your God. Mm. Jesus said, do not put the Lord thy God yeah. to a foolish test. Wow. Amen. It must be in God's will. Yes, yes. The third test. Mm -hmm. Amen. The third time he's getting ready to test Jesus is with fortune. Wow. You see, mm -hmm. he didn't get Jesus to turn the stones to bread well. because of the word. Amen. He did not. Get Jesus, amen, to turn to his fame because Jesus was not concerned about being famous. He was already famous because he was the son of God. Now, Satan is getting ready to test Jesus with fortune. Amen. Matthew said the devil led Jesus up to the top of a very high mountain. And he showed Jesus all of the kingdoms of the world. Yeah. The devil said if you will only bow down and worship me. Amen. He said I will give you all of these kingdoms. Amen. You see what Satan was really saying? Uh, I'll give this all to you. But you know what? It was not Satan's to give. Amen. Amen. Well, well. Jesus said to Satan, get thee behind me, Satan. It is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thy serve. Satan had forgotten Genesis 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Amen. Jesus is telling us that we can prevail when we are tested by Satan, but we must use the word of God. Amen. The third thing we see is the proceed from the test. The proceed from the test. The proceed means to depart from, to advance from, or to set in motion. You see, when Jesus had used the word of God, Satan had to depart. Amen. We've seen to prepare. We've seen to prevail. And now we will see how to proceed from testing. 
But it took the word of God. Amen. Because the scripture says that now Satan left Jesus. And the angels of God came and proceeded to care for all of his needs. Well, as I close, let me point something out to you. Because there's a story of a teacher in the classroom. And the teacher is always quiet during the testing. Amen. You see, Jesus had already been put to the test. But you remember when he was baptized by John down by the Red, down by the Jordan River. Jesus had already passed the test. Amen. You see, this wilderness had been a time of testing. Why did Jesus fast for 40 days and 40 nights? Well, I'm glad that you ask. Because in Exodus 34, 28, it tells us that Moses had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And Moses represented the law. Amen. In 1 Kings 19 and 2, it tells us that Elijah had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And Elijah represented the prophets. Now, in this wilderness, Jesus had fasted 40 days and 40 nights because Jesus represented the new covenant that God had for mankind. Because you see, it was after the testing that Jesus began his public ministry. Amen. You remember they tested him time after time. But I'm so glad that he always passed the test. Somebody asked, why was God quiet during his time of testing? But the answer is, God had already prepared him to take the test. And somebody said that after the test comes the communication because Jesus walked along the dusty streets of Galilee telling a dying world that the kingdom of God is at hand. Yeah, God's new covenant. And you know what Jesus did? He healed all of the sick. He gave sight to the blind because he was following the master's instruction. And then he preached to a dying world that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is life eternal through his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And he did it all for you and me. Didn't he pass the test? Because he was willing to die on an old rugged cross. 
for you and for me. Amen. They buried him in a tomb that belonged to somebody else. He passed the test, didn't he? Because on that third day, he rose. And when he rose, he rose with all power in heaven and in earth in his hands. He had told us that he was going back to the Father. Didn't he pass the test? Because he went back. And now he's at the right hand of the Father interceding on our behalf. And you know what? Because he has passed the test. He has given us the strength that we need during our times of testing. This coronavirus is only a test. Amen. Amen. But he will be with you and give us the strength that we need during our time of testing. Ain't God all right? Amen. Won't he do it? Won't he come to your rescue? Can you testify that he has come to my rescue on many of occasions? Amen. God bless you. God bless you. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I die, until I die, I will trust in the Lord, I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I, until I die. Well, I'm going to treat every body right. I'm going to treat every body right. I'm going to treat every body right until I die. Until I die, I'm going to treat every body right. I'm going to treat every body right. I'm going to treat every body right until I, till I die. Amen. After listening to this message, if you would turn to Romans 10, 9, it would tell you that if you want to be saved, according to 10, 9, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. And then believe in your heart that he was raised from the dead and you can have salvation. You see, Satan will put you to the test, but God will show you how to pass the test. Because God is calling for you right now to come and see a man who can do anything but fail. Come while the blood is still running warm in your veins. Amen. And during your time of testing, you will have somebody with you. And then once he comes into your life, he's there until the day of the redemption. I'm going to stay on the battlefield. I'm going to stay on the battlefield. I'm going to stay on the battlefield until I die, until I die, I'm going to stay on the battlefield.
battlefield I'm going to stay on the battlefield I'm going to stay on the battlefield until I till I die Amen Satan will put you to the test but Jesus will certainly see you through Amen, amen. After listening to the message today, if you want to be a blessing to the St. Paul Church, just go to our website and hit the give button. Amen. And we will appreciate you being a blessing to us as well. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We glorify you. We thank you for your word and for the light and the life that your word give us. We just thank you right now. Cover us with your blood as we go forth, and we will always give you the honor and the praises. For it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Hallelujah and amen. God is good. God is so good. Stay on the battlefield until I die. Until I die. I'm going to stay on the battlefield. I'm going to stay on the battlefield. I'm going to stay on the battlefield until I, until I die. And you know on this battlefield, there are ups and downs, isn't it? There are trials and tribulations. And Satan will test us every day. But the only thing we have to do is go down on our knees and call on the Savior. And I can testify, he may not come when you want him to come, but he's always on time. Isn't he on time, y'all? Why don't you repeat after me? He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. Thank you for tuning in today. We hope and pray that you have enjoyed today's broadcast. If you would like to continue to support this ministry, we have three ways available to give. In person, online, and by mail. God bless you and see you next week.